On February 25, 2024, Chicago was marred by a series of vile events, including two horrific discharge incidents. In the video right before this, I covered the first case where sadly, Keonse Gladney lost her life and three others, including her sister, were wounded. The link is in the description below. About four hours later, 14-year-old Amir Dees and his sister were at a friend's house. Soon, horror would strike again. Just after 7.30 p.m., this time on the south side of Chicago, police and emergency services lights could be seen outside a residence on the 8,000 block of South Vincennes Avenue. Two assailants described as males, possibly as young as 14 years old, burst into the home, sparking a confrontation that escalated into a barrage of discharges. Upon arrival in an upstairs bedroom near the front of the house, police found 14-year-old Amir Dees, who was struck in the back, and 20-year-old Ladeveret West Ringgold, who was struck in the abdomen. 36-year-old Randy Graham was also found with a wound to the chest in an upstairs bedroom, while a 16-year-old male was found sitting on a living room couch downstairs with a wound to the left thigh. Sadly, only the 16-year-old was alive. He was then rushed to the University of Chicago Medical Center, where he remained in fair condition, heading towards recovery. The night of the incident, police held a news conference at the scene with Alderman William Hall, who represents the 6th Ward, and they appealed to the public for information. Good evening. I'm Deputy Chief Sonora Ben of Area 2. I have with me Commander Tate, 6th District, Commander Daniels, the 16th District, the Alderman Hall, and Director Brooks. At approximately 7.33 tonight, there was an altercation in the house in the 8,000 block of Vincennes. I erupted. We had four males struck. Three of the victims, a juvenile, two adults, succumbed to their injuries. We have a fourth victim that's in stable condition at the University of Chicago Hospital. We have two individuals that we are seeking to interview. On behalf of the Chicago Police Department, we would like to extend our deepest condolences to the victims and the families. We're asking that if you have any information about this tragic, tragic, senseless incident, that you please text the tip to CPD tip line and also call Area 2 Detective Division at 312-747-8271. Um, on tonight, we are planning three funerals and not three futures. And Chicago is way better than this. So for those of you that are watching, help us find these killers. Do not allow any killer to sleep on any couch, any bed. Do it for the mother that's crying right now. So again, we grateful for our officers, giving everything that they can. But again, Chicago, we're better than this. And so I ask that you join in as we get justice and do what we can to make sure that we again have futures and not funerals. Thank you. A crisis intervention specialist at the scene told news stations that those struck all knew each other but were not exactly blood relatives. As the investigation continued, more details were revealed via police reports. The assailants appear to be known to some or all of the victims, though as of this video, they remain unidentified and no arrests have been announced. Furthermore, 
A motive has not been shared, but in addition to the suggested level of familiarity between the perpetrators and their targets, it was further stated that some victims may have spent time with the perpetrators earlier that day. Witnesses recounted the swift and calculated nature of the attack, with one assailant fleeing through the front door and the other through the back door, evading immediate apprehension. Crisis responder Andrew Holmes calling the triple murder senseless. The way it looks like they knew who they was coming to. I mean, especially if you're going inside of a home or targeting someone's home, but you're targeting someone's life. I'm feeling very sad about it because I love these people. Fred Smith says he knows the Ringgold family returning to the scene where he says they live with a heavy heart. It's really tearing me up inside right about now. And I just can't get over it. You know, it's too many, it's too much going on out here. Ladeverett's mother, who was present in the residence at the time of the incident, recounted the chilling moments. As she prepared two of her other children for school, which was the following day, she mistakenly thought the discharge songs were from her son's Call of Duty video game. Her reality was soon made evident when she opened the door to check, but instead saw someone with a firearm sprinting out the front door. According to a police report, the mother kicked the door shut behind the perpetrator, realizing that LaDeverett had friends over against her wishes as school was the following day. Additionally, she shared with police that earlier in the evening, the 20-year-old had gone out to play basketball and when he got back home, he must have left the door unlocked because there was no sign of forced entry. The family is, is uh, definitely confused and, and it's a tumultuous scene. And, uh, the second one here in Chicago today, um, you know, who has two meetings in one day um, on each side of town, which shows that it's a citywide thing. It's not, you know, you can't say I never would have thought it would happen here because it obviously will happen anywhere. Amir's passing put a spotlight on his journey marked by adversity and resilience in the face of great loss. Following the passing of his mother, Brittany, who succumbed to cirrhosis of the liver in July 2022, Amir found comfort in the care of his grandparents, Cynthia Jones and Jody Roberts, who provided farm support during the tumultuous times. Wrestling with grief, he ate less, slept less, and skipped school, soon turning to the streets. That's when his grandparents stepped in and as time passed, the teen set his mind on becoming a professional basketball player. His favorite player was Memphis Grizzlies point guard, Jam Morant, and he loved his Nike dunk shoes. His grandparents shared that the 14-year-old was scared of the Vio in the South Shore neighborhood where he lived with them and his five siblings and looked forward to moving elsewhere. At the time of his passing, he was preparing to graduate 8th grade at the O'Keeffe School of Excellence and was scheduled to go on a college tour in March. Sadly, Amir's dreams were tragically cut short, leaving behind untapped potential. It doesn't like I've been robbed. My grandson was just beginning to bloom. Cynthia Jones never expected to be here at a morgue visiting the boy she raised after his mother, her daughter, died from an illness years ago. I keep that in mind that he's with his mom. I get that. But it doesn't replace that piece of my heart that's been snatched away. Talking with the detectives, they said nothing about an altercation. It was a home invasion from what they explained to me. Whether it's your child or another child, show that child love because you never know when something like this is going to take him away from you. Much has not been shared about LaDeverett. However, his sister took to social media with posts reflecting the heartbreak she was experiencing following the incident. Randy's social media posts showed him as an active father in his children's lives. I wish the 16-year-old a speedy recovery and may the family and friends 
of Amir, Ledeveret, and Randy find solace in the happy memories and may their souls rest in perpetual peace. Thank you.